Welcome to this IBKR podcast. My name's Andrew Wilkinson, and in this episode, I'm going to be chatting all about backtesting option strategies. And my guest is Matt Amberson, who's the principal at Option Research and Technology Services, or ORAT for short. Welcome, Matt. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to be here. Good to see you. Let's get uh, my favorite subject. Let's get underway. Can you explain for the audience in a nutshell, what does backtesting involve, please, Matt? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've had data forever at ORAS and, and people go, how do you know that your data is good? How do you know that it works? I go, well, let's put a backtesting platform together. And so in a backtesting uh, situation, you stimulate a strategy that you want to trade, let's say short a put spread. And you say, okay, I'm going to short this put spread every time this happens, this entry criteria. And then I'm going to see how it does. And we do things like we have very clean historical data. We have trading assumptions and it all is important to do because you need to, we call it slippage and, and you might know it as just crossing the bid ass spread. And then we also have commission assumptions in there and we then go through and pretend we're trading. So backtesting is a cheap way to see how you're going to do in a particular situation, Andrews. Okay. And how does that help the investor and particularly the options investor, Matt? Yeah, well, it saves them some money often. And, but mostly what, what I like is it shows people what to expect from a particular trading strategy. And also what is the difference between trading? there's so many decisions now, like all these days to expiration, all these different strikes, which ones could you possibly choose and know? Well, backtesting could help you on that. And of course, the past doesn't always reflect the future, but it gives you a pretty good rhyme of it. And so backtesting helps you by having you see what comes out historically. And as an investor, what are my expectations? What are the things I'm looking for? What do I want to accomplish by using options? And that's what backtesting can help with. So help me out a bit here. What's the critical element? Is it testing to find the best strategy or is it testing to find the best entry or exit points? You asked the hard questions, Andrew. So I, I would say what you're trying to do is make a successful trade in the future. And so with incomplete and inaccurate sometimes knowledge about what is going to happen, you have to use a back test to inform these decisions placed in uncertainty. And so what's critical about backtesting is you want to get as much information as possible. You don't just say, I'm going to find the best one that's overfit and did the best. What you want to do is dig deeper, really work at it, compare other symbols or maybe, or do other techniques that can help you predict and have the best future test. You don't want the best back test. You want the best future results. So that's the critical part and that's difficult. Can you apply back testing across all symbols or even across all markets? Or do you need to test symbol by symbol? That's part of the critical point is that you want to find something that doesn't just work for one particular symbol. You could get similar symbols and then another similar symbol and then a different symbol. And understand why a, a strategy works with one and doesn't with the other. And when you could start to explain all that, you're really learning about the crux of the situation and what needs to happen in the future for you to be successful with your option investment. And yes, definitely want to test it over many symbols. We have ways in our design uh, of our back testing to say, okay, make it easy to take all these different assumptions and put it on a different symbol. See how that did. Okay. Then go in and say, what if I adjust this thing? How well does it do? So the, all those are very important in order to predict and try to come up with the best performing strategy in the future using those techniques. What if you found that the back testing kind of really lights up the room? What works well? I think the cool thing, and I learn things all the time. I've done million, hundreds of millions. I mean, we have 
181 million pre-run tests on the interactive brokers platform right now. So I've done those times 10. So I've seen so many back tests and I always learn something, but one of the coolest things I've learned, and I used to be a market maker and I kind of had this in the back of my head. So I had these theories and I could prove them out, but one of the neat things that like a rule of thumb that I've now learned is when the volatility is really high and it seems like it's really high, you might be tempted to sell it. But really what I've learned in backtesting is that there's a kind of something keeping implied from going to even the correct heights when it gets really high. So I come up with a theory, like they don't get the IV as high as they should when it's high and they don't get it as low as they should when it's low. So that's like just one of the many kind of rules of thumb and neat things that you learn from backtesting is like, oh, even though it's high, doesn't mean sell it actually means could be the opposite. It could mean they're not getting it high enough. So those are some really neat things to learn from back test. And have you stumbled across things that just don't work? Well, I mean, I think when I've had my least success in impl <laughs> implementing some of these strategies, it's when you take the lazy way out. Back testing is not lazy. If you're going to make it work, you're going to have to really work at it. Meaning it do some of the things that you brought up before testing different symbols testing different days to expiration, testing different strikes to use. Well, if you really get into it and really measure it, you're going to do well. But if you just take the lazy way out and go, oh, this is the top of your 181 million tests. I'm just going to use that. I could tell you that's probably the, the most overfit. One of the no-nos of back testing is you want to find something that works in many different situations. That might be a starting point, but that's not an ending point. So when you just are lazy, choose the top one without really testing it. Those are where I get in trouble, Andrew. Matt, I think you could spend hours playing with this software. Would you say it's of equal value to both new uh, traders, new to options, uh, as well as to those who have been trading options for years? Everyone could get something out of yeah. practicing. I learn things and I've been doing this you know, 15 years and been market making before that. And, you know, so we've, and we've had this option research firm for 20 years. And so I learned things and, uh, but the new person comes in and looks at it and says, it has some aha moments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you should, the greatest thing for having a company like mine is hearing from these guys, it just, uh, accelerates and just gets them so thrilled to be able to understand what's going on. Whereas before I remember the first day on the floor, I went around and I said, what? Or all these numbers, what is going on? And when you start to get it, you go, ah, you walk down and you go, I get this now. Back testing does that for people. And it, there's nothing that makes you feel better is when someone just writes this glowing email and said, before I was a newbie, and now I feel like I understand at least part of what's going on in the options game out there. For the listener, the ORAT backtesting software is available to IBK clients at no cost in the Discover section of Trader Workstation and the IBK mobile app. And Matt Amberson, thank you very much for joining me on this IBK podcast. Thanks, Andrew. It was great. And as a reminder for our audience, if you like what you heard in this episode, please do remember to subscribe to our channel from wherever you download your podcast from. Thanks, everybody. Bye for now. The analysis in this material is provided for information only and is not and should not be construed as an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to buy any security. To the extent that this material discusses general market activity, industry, or sector trends, or other broad-based economic or political conditions, it should not be construed as research or investment advice. To the extent that it includes references to specific securities, commodities, currencies, or other instruments, those references do not constitute a recommendation by IBKR to buy, sell, or hold such investments. This material does not and is not intended to take into account the particular financial conditions, investment objectives or requirements of individual customers. Before acting on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and, as necessary, seek professional advice. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. For more information, read the characteristics and risks of standardized options, or ODD, which may be accessed through the link found in the podcast description page.